Hello student, in this video lecture, I am going to discuss the project topic of geography for class 7. The topic that is assigned to you is elements of weather. Now, before doing the project work, you must go through the important notes. Let me read out the notes. The project must be done in a less bound copy with interleaf pages or in a channel file with the interleaf pages. You have to take help from Google or AccuWeather apps used in Android smartphone for extracting information related to the table diagram related to the project work. <coughs> now the cover page of the project must contain the biodata. It should contain the following information, name of the school, name of the topic, name of the student, class, section and roll number. Then you have to write the contents. The content must compose of acknowledgement, introduction, elements of weather, weather recording chart of the local area, conclusion, bibliography. Acknowledgement. After content, you have to write acknowledgement. You have to be very careful while writing acknowledgement. The word you are using should be very systematic and precise. At first, you have to thank the sister principal, then the board, and at last, subject teacher, your guardian, and other resource person who have helped you in doing the project. Then you have to write introduction. Let me read out. Weather and climate have influenced our daily life in many ways. For instance, we wear clothes according to the weather conditions. When the weather is hot, we wear light clothes and when the weather is cold, we wear warm clothes. Weather and climate are two different but closely related terms. They cannot be used interchangeably. Now a short difference between weather and climate is presented. Weather is the day-to-day -day atmospheric condition of a particular place during a short period of time. On the other hand, climate is the average atmospheric condition of a large area over a long period of time. Weather changes from day to day or even within the same day. On the other hand, the climate remains almost same year after year. The elements of weather are temperature, rainfall, humidity and precipitation of a particular place. On the other hand, the climate includes factors like average temperature, rainfall and humidity of a region. The weather serves as a basis for the formation of daily weather reports. On the other hand, the climate serves as a basis to divide the earth into different climatic zones. The weather can be compared to a watch that shows the change in time constantly. On the other hand, the climate can be compared to a calendar that remains the same, changing only once a year. That means, in introduction part, you have to write the basic concept of weather and climate and the difference between weather and climate. Next, you have to write about elements of weather. The first element is temperature. Temperature is a degree of hotness or coolness of the air. <coughs> temperature of the atmosphere changes not only between day and night, but also from season to season. For example, summer is hotter than winter. There are two kinds of temperature that we can measure. One is maximum, another one is minimum. The temperature is called maximum when the degree of heat is the highest during any given day. It is called minimum temperature when the degree of heat is the lowest during any given day. The average of the maximum and minimum temperature give the mean daily temperature. The instrument that we use for measuring temperature is thermometer. 
Now what does the thermometer composed of? As you can see in the picture, it is 6s maximum and minimum thermometer. It composed of a U-shaped glass tube filled up with mercury and alcohol. The contraction and expansion of mercury bring changes in the level of metal indices that help us to interpret or understand if there is any change in the temperature of the air. And we use two kinds of scale for measuring temperature that is Fahrenheit scale and Celsius scale. Second element is atmospheric pressure. It is the force exerted by the column of air on the surface of the earth. High temperature will have low atmospheric pressure and vice versa. Low atmospheric pressure is an indication of stormy weather whereas high atmospheric pressure indicates clear weather. The instrument used for measuring atmospheric pressure is barometer. There are two kinds of barometer, mercury barometer and android barometer and the unit is millibar. Now in a mercury barometer what we use? We use a column of mercury. When the air pressure increases, the column of mercury within the glass tube increases. When air pressure decreases, the column of mercury in the glass tube decreases. This change in the level of the mercury help us to understand change in the atmospheric pressure. But the problem with this barometer is it is very difficult to transport from one place to another. That means this particular barometer is not portable. Next one is Android barometer. Android barometer is very much portable. It is small in size but in place of mercury barometer it use a vacuum chamber. The contraction and expansion of this vacuum chamber due to changes in the atmospheric pressure help us to understand what is the amount of atmospheric pressure at a particular place. But in terms of accuracy if you consider mercury barometer is more accurate than android barometer. The third element is humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air at a given time. Humidity rises with the increase in temperature and fall with the decrease in temperature. Warm air carries more water vapor as compared to the cool air. Humidity is expressed as actual humidity and relative humidity. Actual humidity or absolute humidity is the actual amount of water vapor present in the air. It is expressed in gram per centimeter cube. Relative humidity is the ratio between actual amount of water vapor present in the air at a given temperature and the maximum capacity of water vapor that the air can hold at that temperature. It is expressed in percentage. There are two kinds of instrument. One is hygrometer, another one is wet bulb and dry bulb thermometer that we use for measuring humidity. As you can see in this picture, one is airy hygrometer. Another one is wet and dry bulb thermometer that we use for measuring the percentage or the amount of humidity. Now the fourth element is cloud. Children if you look towards the sky especially at the time of monsoon you will find that the entire sky is covered with cloud. Now the question lies what is cloud? When rising air cools because of expansion and some proportion of its water vapor from tiny droplets of water and ice that float at different height then clouds are formed. Well there is no specific instrument for measuring the cloud cover but there is a is an unit that is called 
octus. This particular unit octus is used for measuring the cloud cover. Now how it is done? It is done by dividing a mirror into equal size square up to a multiple of 8. Then placing the mirror under the open sky. After that how many square covered by cloud is counted to calculate the amount of cloudiness in the sky. No octus means sky is cloudless while 8 octus means sky is completely covered by the cloud. In this cloud cover chart you can see that we use small circles as a symbol to indicate the nature of cloud cover. If the sky is clear you can see a white circle, if the sky is overcast you can see a dark circle. In this way depending upon the nature of cloud cover we use different kind of symbols. Next one is wind that is our fifth element. What is wind? Wind is nothing but the horizontal movement of air from high pressure area to the low pressure area. Why this movement take place? Due to unequal heating of the earth surface that causes variation in the atmospheric pressure. The vertical movement of air is called air current. Now there are two kind of instrument we use one for measuring wind direction another one wind speed. We use wind vane for measuring wind direction. In a wind vane there is an arrow whose pointed part always in the direction in which the wind is moving help us to understand the direction of the wind. Another one is anemometer which help us to measure the speed of the wind by using three rotatory cups. Next element that is the last element is precipitation and rainfall. Both these term are interrelated to each other. Rainfall is nothing but a type of precipitation. Now let us go in detail what is precipitation and rainfall. Water vapor continuously changes to droplets of water in the atmosphere. These small droplets join one another and keep growing in size till the air containing them is unable to hold them. Due to the gravitational force, these droplets fall down. This process is called precipitation. Precipitation occur in four forms, rain, snow, hailstones and sleet. Rain fall give us fresh water, it is an important element of weather. It influences vegetation, crops and other human activities therefore scientists have developed various instruments to measure and record it. The instrument that we use for measuring rainfall and precipitation is rain gauge that composed of two parts. One is a cylinder for collecting the rainwater, another one is a beaker that is calibrated with a scale that help us to calculate the amount of rainfall. Now after writing about various element of weather and the instrument for measuring them you have to write about weather recording chart of a local area. That means you have to collect following information about the weather of your city in which you are living. If you are from Ranahat you have to collect all this information about Ranaghat. If you are living in some other city then you have to collect information about that city. Now what are the information? First of all date and day that you can write from the calendar. Then maximum temperature, minimum temperature, humidity, cloud cover, nature of rainfall. All this information you can get from Google or from AccuWeather. 
Now let me discuss some important points or important notes about weather recording chart. The weather recording chart must contain the information about 15 consecutive days about the city or town in which you live. For example, students from Ranaghat will collect information about weather condition of Ranaghat and so. Nature of rainfall are following types. Drizzle, heavy rain, rainfall with thunder and lightning. That means when you are writing the nature of rainfall in your table, you have to follow these terms. Type of cloud cover, partially cloud cover, cloudy clear sky. Similarly for cloud cover also, you have to follow these terms. Now how you will understand what kind of rainfall or cloud cover? You can do it by two way. Either you can observe and what you understand you put that in the table or you take help from the AccuWeather app from the Android phone or any other kind of website related to weather condition. I again repeat either you observe the nature of cloud cover or rainfall and depending upon your understanding you write on the table or you take help from AccuWeather app of your Android phone or any other kind of website related to weather condition. In the conclusion part you have to write why we need to main measure various elements of weather. We have to do so so that we can forecast or predict the future weather condition of a given region. Why to predict or forecast? Because it will help us in various ways. It is useful for people engaged in activities like fishing and farming. It can provide advance warning to the farmer about the amount of rainfall. It gives strong prediction to the fisherman, pilot, etc. Advance warning about flood and storm can help in saving thousands of lives. How it is done? It is done through various gadgets like ocean buoys, artificial satellites, weather balloons and weather observatories. Last you have to write bibliography which is very important part of the project from where we have taken the help. Well, I have prepared this material for your project work with the help of a book that is called World of Geography. For that I have mentioned that name in bibliography along with its writer that is Vinita Kumar and publisher Cordoba Publication. One thing you must observe while writing the name of the author, you should always write the title first, the surname first, then the name of the author. And second, you have to write the name of the website. Now don't write name of the website can also be given. Here you have to put the name of the website from where you are taking the help. I hope I was able to make you understand what you have to do regarding the project. You can take help from this video, from this slide show and any time you can pause it for your reference regarding the project work or for your understanding and if any problem you face regarding understanding any part, you please text me in the WhatsApp so that I can help you out or the co-subject teacher so that he can help you out. Thank you.